Welcome to Intuitive Transformations with your host, Sylvia Henderson, and discover tools, wisdom, and inspiration that will empower you to transform your life. Sylvia is an intuitive life coach and energy healer with a growing practice that is focused on empowering others to be more of who they want to be. For the next hour, join Sylvia and explore and unravel anything in the way of you creating the life that you would love to live on the Ohm Times Radio Network. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Intuitive Transformations radio show, where you will find tools that you can use to change and transform your life every Thursday afternoon at 2 p.m. Eastern, right here on the Ohm Times Radio Network, the voice of consciousness at ohmtimes.com. This is Sylvia Henderson, your host, and if you would like to learn more about me and the transformational work that I do, then please be sure to visit my website at intuitivetransformations.net. And while you're there, I want to encourage you to sign up for my email group, not only because it will allow us to connect, but also because I have a really awesome gift for you. And I've never done this before, but I created a very special 20-minute emotional healing meditation that allows you to release fear, anxiety, and worry with much greater ease. This is a free gift from me to you, and you can share this recording with others uh, freely, and it's pretty much uh, the gift that just keeps on giving that way. This healing meditation is especially beneficial during times such as these, when everything in the world seems uncertain, chaotic, and in a constant state of unexpected changes as all of humanity continues its journey of awakening into the oneness of all that is. So please do take advantage of this free meditation and use it often, especially when you find yourself feeling overwhelmed by changing circumstances, either in your personal life or in the world around us. Now, if you thought 2016 was a year of massive change, well, you really haven't seen anything yet. 2017 will continue to bring many more unexpected changes our way, which is why now more than ever, it is the time for humanity to utilize new and novel, spiritually inspired approaches to our everyday problems, especially when it comes to ensuring our emotional well being and physical health. Well, today I have an incredible guest joining me, and together we are going to discuss something that's near and dear to my heart, which is healing and energy. And we're going to explore what the next evolutionary steps may be that consciousness is taking us to, especially in the ever-expanding field of energy medicine. In particular, we're going to talk about a remarkable hands-on healing modality called quantum touch, which is so effective and easy to learn that even children can learn to use it to heal themselves and others. And we are also going to talk about how energy medicine is evolving from hands-on healing to something entirely different. Joining me today is Richard Gordon, who is an energy medicine pioneer, a visionary, and the creator of Quantum Touch. Richard has over 37 years of experience in the field of energy medicine and is the best-selling author of Quantum Touch, The Power to Heal, which is published in 17 different languages, and the author of Your Healing Hands, The Polarity Experience, which is available in 10 different languages. He's also author of Quantum Touch 2.0, The New Human, which was published in 2013. Richard's journey began while attending Christo's School of Natural Healing in Taos, New Mexico in the 1970s, where he discovered the power of working with energies and hands-on healing. This work led to a wide range of further discoveries as Richard began to explore all the energies around his hands. He eventually met an awe-inspiring healer named Bob Rasmussen, who had an extraordinary ability to heal people's bodies with his hands. 
Richard began apprenticing with Bob, and this is how Richard's work was born. Richard founded the Quantum Touch organization more than 16 years ago. This organization currently has more than 1,400 certified practitioners in over 50 countries around the globe. Their vision and mission is to help improve the health and quality of life for many people using simple, easy to learn energy healing techniques. With his expertise and passion for sharing the message about hands-on healing, Richard has traveled around the world to speak at medical centers, conferences, and chiropractic colleges. He was a faculty member at Hartwood Institute and the Holistic Health Institute. Well, guess what? Dr. C. Norman Sheely, founding president of the American Holistic Medical Association, has endorsed Richard's work, calling it the first technique that may truly allow us all to become healers. Richard Gordon, welcome to the show. Uh, thank you, Sylvia. It's a real pleasure to be here. Well, it's absolutely a pleasure to have you. Um, you know, you have such a huge wealth of knowledge and wisdom. You started exploring energy medicine back in the 1970s, and now you've developed this wonderful healing technique that is circled around the globe um, called quantum touch. So what is quantum touch, and what makes quantum touch unique from other energy medicine modalities? Well, quantum touch, in its essence, has started as a form of energy healing, uh, primarily hands-on healing. And what makes it different than other modalities is both its simplicity and ease of use, but its power. The way we do it is we're using a combination of breathing and body awareness exercises the entire time we're working. So we're always feeling awareness through our body in various patterns and moving the breath in various patterns in conjunction with those body sensations. This raises the life force energy of our body and our hands, which first off protects us from picking up any energy from the other person. Secondly, raises our energy really high so the other person ends up matching the vibration that you're holding the field of. And we'd like to say that the definition of a healer is someone who is sick and got well, and a great healer is someone who is very sick and got well quickly, because ultimately, we don't heal anybody else. You don't really heal a cut on your, you don't know how to heal a cut on your finger. It's not something you're doing with your intellect. It's the body and spiritual intelligence that's healing the cut. We simply provide that field of energy so as to allow other people to accelerate their own self-healing. So what I really love about quantum touch is that it is a, um, that the, the practitioner who are the facilitator, the one who is raising their vibration um, that is helping the actual healer, that person that has the ailment, um, raise their vibration this entrainment happens, and so both individuals, are they receiving benefits then? Yeah, absolutely. Um, one of the physicians who wrote a review on my book had written, uh, Jerry Pittman, he wrote that in its elegance, Quantum Touch first provides healing for the practitioner. So both the practitioner and the client are both receiving the benefits simultaneously. And you mentioned Dr. Norman Sheely, and he wanted to test out my work. He was very skeptical when I met him, and it's not just because he lived in Missouri. He wanted to know if this was just some kind of psychological mechanism. So after working with his staff, his secretary, his accountant, his nurses, and so forth, and helping them remove their minor pains, he had me working on a 90-year-old woman who was all bent over from osteoporosis, and within seconds he saw her hips just rolling back into place, and the woman's doctor got on her knees and measured her, and her jaw was open. And I said, Norm, are you impressed? He goes, no. He said, uh, I think some of those people might have liked you a little bit. That's how skeptical he was. He said, I want to see how this works on people with the most difficult chronic pain who have suffered for 
20, 30 years who have never been helped by anything. He said, I don't have to do a double blind on everything. I just have to make the test so rigorous, I can't believe anything but the outcome. So I taught his staff to do quantum touch, and we gave these one-hour group sessions to a whole population of people with intractable chronic pain. And the result was that every single one of the patients had between a 30 and 70% reduction of their pain from a single session. And that was lasting pain relief that we were able to provide for them. So it's a very simple, powerful way that ordinary people can very quickly and effectively access the power of their own healing potentials uh, and it doesn't have any mysticism around it. It has no uh, magic handshake or symbols or attunements or anything like this. It's just breathing and body awareness and connecting to your love and desire to be helpful. So I'm just really curious. How did you step into this knowledge and knowing about the importance of the breath and the body awareness and how effective that is for creating the environment for true healing to take place. And I know we're going to be going to a break in a moment, but if you could just begin that conversation, I would love sure. that. Sure. Yeah. And just, just give me a, a knock, knock when it's time to take off. Um, you mentioned it earlier. I met this gentleman named Robert Rasmussen who showed me how to use breathing and body awareness. I couldn't believe my eyes when my girlfriend in front of the room and he pointed out her scoliosis, and we're all looking at the bones in her back and how bent up she was. And he touched her hip, and the hip just rolled back into alignment, like a hot knife through butter. I, and the bones in her back started moving, and I was astounded, assuming I'll never learn to do this, and no one else either will be able to do it. But I discovered he could. I apprenticed with him, took over in his retirement, and I think it's time for you to take over for your break, huh? Just about. Well, <laughs> thank you for that. And we'll be back in just a moment with more of Richard Gordon and talking about energy medicine and quantum touch. The future of Internet Radio is here. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Hello, I'm Miriam Knight of New Consciousness Review, inviting you to my new show where I interview the rising stars of the conscious awakening. We'll explore the many faces of consciousness in action and intriguing perspectives on life, the universe, and everything in between. Join us each Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern on the Rising Stars Show. When I was little, I didn't talk for a long time. I was sensitive to lights and sounds, so I built secret hiding places where they couldn't get in. Sometimes, I did the same things over and over, until one day, I found out I had autism. My family got me help. Slowly, I learned how to live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at AutismSpeaks.org slash signs. Brought to you by Autism Speaks and the Ad Council. Welcome back. Um, before we went to the break, uh, Richard was sharing about how he came to develop Quantum Touch after apprentice, after observing his girlfriend having this amazing um, physical healing right in front of his eyes. And so, Richard, you started apprenticing with um, Bob uh, Robert Rasmussen, and mm -hmm. shortly after that, did you evolve it further? Well, it took many, many years before I evolved it further, but I got down to the simplicity of it, and I was also able to uh, to just take it further and further, uh, new breathing techniques, new ways of moving the energy, uh, vortexing it, working with the chakras and so forth. So I, have, I evolved the work radically, and then about eight or nine years ago, I'm not very good with dates, 
uh, I found, I was having dinner with some friends, and one friend said, oh, show how you can move a, per, you know, move a person's posture back into alignment with a light touch. I said, sure. So this woman stood up, and just before I measured her, and her right hip was really high in the back, and just before I was about to put my hands on to do it, he said, you know, I bet you could do that without touching. And I said, really? He said, yeah, go ahead and try. So I meditated and measured her again, and she'd come completely back into alignment. I was blown away, completely astounded. And I tested it thousands of times because I'm the biggest skeptic. I start off very skeptical myself, and then I have to show myself something so many times to get past my own skepticism. And once I did... I started asking the question, and it's a great question, if this is possible, what else can we do? And I kept asking that question for years and eventually wrote Quantum Touch 2.0, the new human, outlining, I don't know, about five or six new human abilities that we didn't know we had. And that led to the Quantum Touch Level 2 workshop, where you can work two or three times faster without even touching somebody. Now, combining the basic quantum touch work with a level two is synergistically more powerful than just doing the level one or the level two. So I really encourage people to do both. But, for example, you can work on multiple conditions simultaneously with a person. You can work on uh, multiple people simultaneously. We, We keep seeing openings for things that we had never tried we can even share our gifts with each other that was an amazing story when that when i discovered that one so that that led to all kinds of discoveries so people are using it uh in the widest range of ways for instance when i was in uh, macau china recently uh there was the whole audience was was in tears because of one particular story. And the story was of some parents who left the baby with the babysitter, but in China, they don't respect babies the way we do here many times. And the babysitter got angry and shook the baby, and the baby received severe brain damage. And the doctors didn't think the baby was gonna survive. And the baby was in a community of people who knew quantum touch, and everybody's running energy to the baby. When I met the baby, I met her mom, and the mom had tears in her eyes, and the baby gave me a big smile and reached out his hand to hold my hand. And the baby appeared to me all but normal. And they said, well, he's about 90% back now, but the doctors didn't even think he would make it. And so he was continuing to recover, and the whole audience was in tears because these things shouldn't happen. But we see things that shouldn't happen all the time. And so the sciences have to change. That's really what it comes down to, because the the authorities of our time have made certain assumptions. And the fundamental assumption is the only things that are real in the world can be weighed, measured, and put into a mathematical formula. And Rupert Sheldrake gave a famous TED Talk where he talked about 10 dogmas of science. And that was the first dogma of materialism, the assumption that everything has a physical basis. But there's other assumptions, too. And quantum touch challenges some of these fundamental assumptions that the scientific community has made. You know, I love this. And so then how, as you're seeing this all unfold before you, and you've even seen how quantum touch began, but yet it began to evolve where you're saying that you can work with multiple people. There's all these things that you identify oh, yeah. in your um, your book, The New Human, Quantum Touch 2.0. Um, so where do you see us evolving to next? Oh, boy. <laughs> well, in June, about six, about six, a little less than six full months from now, uh, I'll write about that. Um, my new book will be out, my fourth book, and it's going to be called The Secret Nature of Matter. And I have made some uh, discoveries that astound me every day that I think about them. I ran 58 experiments 
exploring the integration of life force energy, which is the energy we're using in the healing sessions, and matter itself. And I found out that some some breakthroughs, and in fact, I'm in touch with some of the top scientists now who have interest in the field, who have read my book already, and they're not writing me endorsements yet, even though they love the book, because they want to know if I'm right. So we're going to have to do some double-blind experiments. Now, I can, I can demonstrate up and down all day long on skeptical populations. I have no doubt at all that I'm onto something because of all the years I've been working on it and, my, and the quality of observations I'm able to make. You know, you don't need a double blind to know if the light switch is pointing up or pointing down or if the gun is in the hole or it's on the green. These things are very self-evident. But I can demonstrate that you can put consciousness into a physical object and then if a person touches that physical object, they'll have a physiological response that is considered impossible by uh, modern science. And that's just one of the steps, but it goes way beyond that. So this is really fascinating. So what exactly do you mean about this? Because I know that you have recently introduced a quantum touch pendant, which is different yes. than having a quantum touch session from a practitioner, correct? Yeah, yeah. The quantum touch pendant was the result of over 40 years of research and experimentation. I never imagined I would be putting out something like this before. And it's only because of the book that I was working on this last year, The Secret Nature of Matter, that uh, I even came up with this stuff or even knew that it was possible. The I ran 58 experiments, and how can you know if consciousness is in matter? Well, I had written a chapter in The New Human where I called it visible magic, and it was thrown way back in the book. It was probably like chapter 19 or something, and so it wasn't like this is what the book is about. The book was about helping to heal people, but I had a chapter called visible magic, and what it showed was that by meditating on a certain part of a person's body, a certain piece of the anatomy, you could get the occiput, the cranial bones, to move back into alignment spontaneously and the hips to untwist and would stay permanently untwisted. And that's quite a wonderful magic trick. Most people don't even know what I'm talking about, but it's measurable in a few seconds by palpation and your eyeballs. So you just put your hands on, feel where the bone is, and get your eyes level with your fingers, and you can see exactly what's there. And so I was able, since I knew how to do this, I was able to test various kinds of things to see if an object would hold the energy and intention of that particular move. And then I was able to get a yes or no answer to many, many questions without any interference. And actually it's a huge subject, but one, okay, let me tell you a couple of experiments that I did and then we'll take you to what the big breakthrough was. One of the experiments was I put energy into a, a physical object and it turned out it didn't matter if it was rubber or plastic or paper or metal or stone, it, nothing mattered. All matter holds energy and intention equally. It's, Everything is made of God stuff, and all stuff holds consciousness equally because it's all made of God stuff. That's it. Second point is I would put energy into those objects, and i just touch somebody with that object, and it would immediately untwist their pelvic and occipital torsion. Well, there's a website I came to recently called Science-Based Medicine. Sounds very impressive. And they said the cranial manipulation is tooth fairy science because it does not exist. Well, it does exist, and you can actually feel the bones being half an inch high on one side of the, uh, the back of the skull or the occiput as the other side, and two seconds later, they're level. In fact, I made a video recently that's kind of amusing. It's called Quantum Touch Pendant Demo. And you can see these people's reactions when they're suddenly shocked, astounded, that the whole shape of their head just changed in two seconds. I just touched them with a pendant, and it, it shifted them. So this is a 
major thing. And I, so I, I ran all these tests. What would happen if I boil water? So I ran energy into water. A person drinks the water, they get untwisted. What about boiling the water? When the water cooled, it still held the information, but the water that had evaporated at the top of the lid no longer held the information. And so that was another one of the experiments that I put into the book. And these are all things people could do at home in their kitchen and just visiting with friends. So nothing is high tech or requiring special equipment. But then I made the granddaddy discovery, and it's kind of a little bit of a long story, but to try to shorten it, I found out there is such a thing as conscious entanglement. In other words, you can group things in your mind together, and anything you do to any one of them will happen to all of them. And once I discovered this, and I could go into the whole story how it came about, it's, it's a very interesting story, but once I discovered it, I discovered that I could get these pendants and I could group them all together in my mind. And now we have about a thousand of them in the hands of our best quantum touch people who are putting their love, gratitude, energy, healing into the pendant every day. So now the pendant is holding that healing vibration and it's getting stronger every day. This is not something that gets weaker day by day. When you use it, it gets stronger because soon we'll have a few thousand people and it's going to multiply from there. This is becoming very popular uh, for people to, to buy and to use them. So I went to a conference in November. That's just how recent this is. And I didn't know how powerful these pendants would be in terms of their healing properties. And I'm sitting with some guy on the last night of the event and he's saying, you know, I haven't been able to breathe through my right sinus since, since I was a teenager. He's probably about 35. So I hand him two of the pendants and I say, here, put these on both sides of your sinuses. He does. And within four or five minutes, he says he can breathe through the right sinus. Then uh, it, it just went on from there. Then other people were watching. And so two women had their jaw tension taken away where they could open. They had some TMJ happening. Another woman had pain under her eyes. A, few, a week ago, I was sitting with a man who had, had had neck surgery, and he was complaining how he slept on the wrong pillow, and his neck was really out. Uh, a few hours later, his neck was 100% better again, and he bought a pendant. We don't even begin to know where this goes. I can hear the music, so I should probably take, we, get ready for the break. That's great, Richard. I mean, this is a fascinating story. Uh, please, everyone, please stay tuned because we're going to dive deeper into this. There's so much more to learn. We'll be back in just a moment. The cutting edge of conscious radio, Om Times Radio, IOM FM. As difficult as it is to believe, there are places in Africa where human traffickers sell albino children and their body parts for use in magic rituals. Humanity Healing International is actively working in Uganda to change this paradigm. The Albino Rescue Project finds albino children who are at risk and places them in safe schools and environments where they can learn and grow free from fear. To learn more or to sponsor a child, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio, and we'll explore these topics and so much more on Destination Unlimited. Hey, let me ask you something. Would you seat your three-year-old child on a windowsill? Would you seat them beside a lit fireplace or by the deep end of a pool? One last question. Would you seat your child in a car seat that's not correct for them? Car crashes are a leading killer of children ages 1 to 13. Secure their future. Seat them in the correct car seat. For more information, visit safercar.gov slash the right seat. A message from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council.
Welcome back to the Intuitive Transformations radio show on ownTimes.com. So, Richard, you have shared this amazing story about how you can transfer your energetic healing energy into inanimate objects because, as you said, everything is made out of God's stuff, you know, all matter can hold consciousness because actually that's what holds all matter to get, you know, in form. Exactly. Um, I I find it fascinating that you were able to do this with paper and um, water. I can understand because of so much of the research that's already gone into the, um, uh, what, how water can hold information and vibrational frequency, but you know, paper and, and that it doesn't lose its potency. And now these pendants, which is really quite remarkable, but I do have a question for you because so much of what I've, of what you've talked about is really this spinal realignment. And I'm just from a, from a, um, physiological medical point of view, why is spinal alignment so important for optimal health and well-being? Well, it it is important because the whole nervous system operates through the spine, but I just use it as a window to see what's happening. In other words, most people would are concerned about pain relief and bringing down inflammation, accelerating the healing process. And that's understandable because that's what they experience and relate to. I appreciate all those things and that's what most of quantum touch is all about. But for the purpose of research, I want to see something that's visible to the naked eye that is replicatable, that could be done in seconds and uh, is considered impossible. So when a person is standing, no one has the ability to untwist their hips instantly. Now, and and when somebody, and and under all circumstances, you can't change the position of cranial bones. I I call this, you know, tooth fairy science. But yet we can measure this in seconds through simple palpation and eyeballing, and it works great. So that's why I've been so fascinated with it, because it's a window to understand what I call the secret nature of matter. And I was as as surprised as you to find out that plastic or the most unlikely items were able to hold consciousness. And I only ran experiments for about one year, but nothing was losing its energy intent in that time. Now, because I have grouped all the pendants together in my mind, Anything that happens to one of the pendants happens to them all. So I ran an experiment where I didn't like the results because I didn't think it should have been working. Uh, it's, it's, like I said, it's a little bit of a long story. So I ran another experiment to find out if there was another thing at play. And I had two women who were both very, who had their spine very twisted. And I borrowed a handful of change. I stared at the coin. I entangled all the coins in my mind, handed them each one of the coins, tapped one of the coins with a charged object, and instantly both women were untwisted simultaneously. And then I ran many other experiments along these lines and found out that objects can be grouped together in consciousness and that anything happening to one of the objects happens to them all. Now we have our best instructors and practitioners from all over the world who are running their best healing energy into the pendant. And the pendant works. But here's a, here was a final conundrum about, about consciousness and matter that surprised me, was that I thought just handing somebody an object would do the untwisting, but it wasn't exactly accurate. What was accurate was that if I hand it to them or touch them for the purpose of causing the alignment, it worked instantly. But if I just hand somebody a pendant, it does not automatically cause an alignment. So now I can just ask somebody else to tap somebody with a pendant and it works instantly. But if I hand them the pendant, it doesn't because the pendant works through intention. And that doesn't mean it's a psychological mechanism. It just seems to be one of the, the ways that this thing actually functions. So, uh, so let me ask there are you so again, many, yeah. If, if it operates on intention, what if someone yeah. has a less than favorable intention? 
I mean, if these oh, are yeah. entangled with each other and you're saying that what happens to of one course. happens to the all. Exactly. Then... So let's say somebody is very depressed and angry and, and filled with sadness, just in the worst state they can be in, in terms of the amount of pain they're carrying. And they're putting all that in, into the pendant. You know, it doesn't matter at all because the power of the love is a thousands and thousands of times stronger than whatever pain and suffering they're putting into the pendant. And we are accessing the pendant for the purpose of, of the healing. So it really doesn't seem to make any difference at all whether a person puts that kind of pain into their pendant because when you look at your pendant, you're wanting to pick up on the healing energy, and that's what becomes available. Okay, great. I'm glad you explained that because I was a little concerned when you said what happens to yeah. one bend, it happens to them all. And so you have your very best instructors and, and all of these wonderful quantum touch practitioners um, mm -hmm. infusing these as well as yourself with these um, yeah. very high vibrational energies. And so are these pendants of, you know, what about someone who doesn't study quantum touch or isn't a practitioner? You know? all, they have to, all they have to do, you see, even a, a person who's never studied energy medicine, knows nothing on the subject at all, all they have to do is think about somebody they love, hold the pen in their hand or look at it, and just feel their love for that person while they're looking at the pendant, and they're already connecting, and they're already adding their good juice into the pendant. So the key they can think about a kitten or a baby or anybody that they just love and just adore and just inf infuse it with your intent. And it automatically works because we are always doing it all the time. We just don't recognize it. And because we haven't had a way to know that it's real, it all seems very woo to people. They don't believe that it's real. So, oh, it's just, you know, a lot of woo that your intention has an impact. No, it really does. It's very powerful. Your intention makes a huge difference. I agree. I totally agree with you. So what is the big difference then between an actual quantum touch session and then if someone were to use the quantum touch pendant? Well, we're still exploring this, but a lot of the, the quantum touch session involves an active person who's focusing their energy and intent and it seems to be stronger for sure, but a lot of the practitioners now are putting pendants on people's bodies while they're doing the session. So you're getting both the group energy of the quantum touch community through the pendant, and you're also getting the energy of that practitioner who's actively bringing up the energy very high. So it seems to be synergistically more powerful to work with the actual practitioner now if a pr one friend of mine told me a couple days ago that he had a pendant in his pocket where he had a pain you know pain in his hip and after a while he just took it out of his pocket because the hip didn't hurt anymore but he never thought about putting it up to his shoulder where it hurt so i suggested he do that then so his pain in his shoulder started going away it's a way for people to receive help but it is not enough because there's emotional causes of health conditions and the pendant or a quantum touch session will definitely not heal everything because sometimes we need to process the old pain and angers and hurts and guilts and other things that we're carrying around that are vibrationally expressing themselves through our bodies as health conditions. Now, if the condition responds to energy, great, then you got it done. But if it doesn't respond, we have another modality that we turn to called self-created health that teaches people how to find and release the emotional causes. And not only do the symptoms disappear if done well, but the people feel incredibly grateful for having had the condition because it showed how they had stopped loving. The body has the ability to be sick, not as a dysfunction, but a communication from their higher consciousness. That is so true. That is so, so true. Because um, so much of what we manifest in our physical form um, is there specifically to kind of tap us on the shoulder to say, hey, you need to look at something here in your life. So I'm, I'm really glad that you have that other 
um, auxiliary um, method as well to deal with the emotional um, content that people tend to carry. Um, so quantum touch, is this something that can be done um, long distance um, or is it limited to the word touch, which is someone has to physically be there with you? Well, when I started, it was touch, but very quickly we realized that we could do long distance healing work. Um, and then the level two work is all long distance where you can get things to happen immediately without touching. And I think the syner synthesis of the two are better than either by themselves. Then the pendant was just the outcome of a combination of all this, all this awareness. I remember one of the first times I did a distant healing session that surprised me. My friend Lori, who was helping me edit my book, she called me up and said, I'm not going to come over and help you today. And I said, why not? She said, I am having a severe allergy attack. And as a nurse, I learned how to medicate myself. So I'm going to knock myself out for two or three days. When I come back, uh, I'll feel better. And so I said, well, have you taken the medication yet? No. Okay, well, let me send some energy. Well, we went back and forth before she finally said, okay, I'll wait an hour before I take the medication. She called me up half an hour later and said, not only is all her allergy symptoms better, but she said that her back pain disappeared as well. And a couple of days later, she called me up and said, the weirdest thing happened, but the next morning after I did the energy work, the heavy calluses on her feet all fell off. I went, what? And I was like shocked. And then years later, I did a distant healing on another friend who used to walk around barefoot all summer and winter in the snow. And after I worked on him, the next morning, the calluses on his feet had fallen off. And he was dragging something behind his foot, he said, which was like the whole bottom of his foot, the callus, one big callus. And, wow. and so we don't know what's possible. We don't know. The, we don't you see we're, we're these spiritual beings thinking we're these physical beings. And we're so much more than that. We are definitely so much more than that. We'll be back in just a few moments. Please stay tuned for more with Richard Gordon. Bringing a more conscious lifestyle to your world. Home Times Radio. IOM FM. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Did you just look down at your phone? You did it again, didn't you? You know, you're flying down the road in a three-ton hunk of steel, and a text takes your eyes off the road for an average of five seconds. At 55 miles per hour, that's long enough to travel the length of a football field and cause some serious damage. Turn it off. Trust me. Whatever it is, you'll live. Learn more at StopTextStopRex.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Welcome back. Before we went into the break, Richard said something very poignant, which is that we think we are physical bodies, but we are so much more than that. And so, Richard, knowing this about us, and, and, and I think about the story you shared about Dr. Uh, Norman Seeley and how he was uh, quite a skeptic when he was presented with your initial uh, results and wanted some more uh, concrete proof or evidence for him. Uh, my question then is, because we believe we're this physical body when we're really not, which of course leads to skepticism with when it comes to anything we can't see, taste, touch, or, or hear, or feel with our body, does skepticism in the healer, the person who has the ailment that's resolving it, does that deter the effects of quantum touch? Uh, never has. Never has. It, it, it never has. No, I, I used to joke. I, I'd say that I eat skeptics for breakfast. Um, 
There, it's a lot of fun for me to deal with skeptics because one of two things happen. They either become astounded or they run away. And in either case, I'm, I'm delighted by the interaction. It's kind of fun. So uh, I remember one time I was at a conference called the Science of Consciousness Conference. And my friend, who was a scientist, made a sign for me. He, he was aware of my work for a long time. And the sign said, Consciousness Affects Matter, free demo. And this one guy comes up to me, and he's got his arms crossed and his head cocked to the side. And he says, all right, what do you got? I said, well, I'm going to untwist your hips in a few seconds without touching you. And he said, well, that's impossible. I said, great, hold that thought. And then I measured him and said, oh, my God, your hips are further out of alignment than almost anybody I've ever seen in my life. I said, to make it hard on me, why don't you lock your hips? Because that's not going to make any difference at all. So he kind of locks his hips. And I meditate and I measure him and said, well, look, they're completely even now. And he said, well, of course, you used reverse psychology on me. And I said, I said, well, do you consider yourself an empirical scientist or faith-based? Well, that was a very insulting question. He said, well, empirical, of course. I said, great. So why don't you watch me do this five or ten more times and see if I'm using reverse psychology? And he said, if I let myself believe this just happened, everything I know about science would fall like a house of cards. Well, as an empirical scientist, don't you want to let the cards fall where they will? And he thought for a moment and he said, not today. And then he proceeded to just turn around and walk away because that was the end of our conversation. Instead of saying, what did you do? Why did it work? How can I learn this? Can I see you do it on other people? Can I do it myself? No, no. The, end, the conversation just ended. He wasn't interested in knowing about this because Everything he knew about reality would be shaken up by this one simple thing. See, nobody can put their hips back in. Nobody can put the occiput back into alignment. And by demonstrating something so simple and tangible, it's possible to show somebody something that has much greater implications. The position, the, the phases of Venus do, don't mean anything to people today, but it showed the Earth was going around the sun to Galileo. And, you know, even in 1900, people didn't believe in the existence of gorillas or rumors throughout Europe about gorillas, but people didn't believe it for one reason and one reason only, not enough people had seen them. And what I'm showing right now is as surprising as these horrible man beasts who are reported to abduct women, the, the gorillas. Now everybody says, oh, of course gorillas exist. Well, right now, what I call spontaneous postural alignment, SPA, is not considered possible. But put me in front of any audience anywhere, and I'll be able to demonstrate it till the cows come home, because it's a really easy thing to do. But the implications change all the fundamental beliefs about science, and suggest that we are spiritual beings. If the mind is not confined to the brain, why does the death of the brain mean the death of the mind? The, f the whole core of our science is based on materialism, and this overthrows that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, what I love about this is, you know, how you're very clearly pointing out how attached we are to our belief systems, because once you start chipping away from that, it, it, it puts people, I think, in a place where they're not sure what is real and what isn't real, and the truth of the matter is, is none of this third dimensional reality that we can feel with our five physical senses is real. It's really the invisible that's far more real than uh, the physical. So Richard, how can people get in touch with you and learn more about quantum touch and maybe even get the pendant? Yeah, you can go to quantumtouch.com and and uh, you can learn all about this stuff. You can find out where the workshops are, where practitioners are, uh, books, um, pendants, whatever you like. Wonderful. And if you want to see a fun, a fun video, watch the Quantum Touch pendant demo video on YouTube. And uh, somebody asked me recently, did you cherry pick those clips? And I go, yeah, of course. I picked some, some interesting reactions that people have. But I can make these videos all day long. I've got about 50 of them now of people being shocked and surprised when they discover the position of their cranial bones just moved in a couple seconds by being touched by a physical object. 
you know, and in preparation for this interview, I took the time to check out that video. Uh, several, there were several actually, and it was yeah. really quite remarkable to see the reactions of those. And literally, you are just touching them and not like yeah. laying the pendant on them. It's like you tap their no. hand and yeah. and the uh, you can tell they're like, they could feel the shift happen in their um, their occiput. They could feel it happening in their sacral. You know, it, it was pretty remarkable to witness. For me, part of the fun is a couple of the people were saying, well, I don't really think it, what, what? And right in the middle of saying nothing happened, they suddenly went shocked discovering yeah. that the whole shape of the back of their head was completely different. It is mind blowing. It's yeah. astounding. I think it's pretty cool. So with your many years of experience in energy medicine, because I mean, gosh, you've had almost 40 years of experience in this field. Actually it's over 40 now. It's an old, old, uh, Oh, bio. that's an old bio. Okay. So over 40 yeah. years of experience. Yeah. What have you found to be the most important and significant ingredient for a successful outcome, regardless of the modality? Uh, just your love and sincerity. It mm -hmm. just, it just precedes everything else. We forget that our love is our most valuable resource, that our love actually has tremendous impact. Our love is incredibly valuable and it truly matters. And if you think about who hurt you the most in your life, absolutely the message they gave you was your love wasn't valuable. It didn't have any impact and it didn't matter. And the people who make you feel most healed and most wonderful inside are the ones who give you the message that your love is valuable, that your love really matters. Yeah. Yeah. Is there any way that we can use the, the um, power of quantum touch to really begin to help our world, especially in the United States, where we now um, feel very divided as a country? Um, and it's not That's that it wasn't mildly. that way before. Right. It, it's not that it wasn't that way before. It's now that it's been quite clear that we are divided and in ways that are very um, uh hurtful, hateful, and angry. Yeah. And so how can I we step into that quantum touch to help heal our country and heal well, the planet? Learning, learning to raise your vibration with the breathing and body awareness is, is always a great thing to do. But essentially, all that polarization and that pain and the rage and the hurt and the anger, we need to turn inside and access the parts of ourselves that want to be the change, as, as it was so famously put, be the change you want to see in the world, and to exemplify what you believe in. And, that's, and I really think that this whole polarization that's happening now is going to be, in the long run, a fabulous thing because it's going to mobilize people to create changes as never before. So I, hopefully I we'll get some good out of it without too much damage in, in the meantime. Yeah, I mean, we're living in this third dimensional reality, which is all about duality. And um, really, when you have something as divisive kind of rear its ugly head, that somehow community begins to form and people begin to step back into their heart space and realize that we're not independent individuals are really all one. And all that emotion mobilizes focused intent and power. And there's a lot of power that people have access to. And if they're feeling too comfortable, they just sit on the couch. But if they're really motivated, they get off the couch and they do amazing things. And there are some fabulous solutions coming down the pike now, environmentally and in other ways, and with healing, of course. Yeah. And this is very exciting. Well, I'm really super stoked about your new book coming out, The Secret Nature of Matter, and all that you're going to disclose and share there. Because if it's anything like what you've already done, I know it's going to be a big game changer and uh, definitely on the cutting edge of what's new and next in terms of understanding consciousness and who and what we are. And so you said that's coming out this summer. Is that correct? It'll be out early June. This really is because the secret nature of matter, and it is a mind blower. 
Great. And people will be able to get that on Amazon and, and Barnes and & Noble course. and Every, online when that's yeah. great. It'll be, it'll be out everywhere through North Atlantic Books. Fantastic. Fantastic. So is there any last thing that you want to share with the listeners about um, how they can use energy medicine, just very briefly in the last few moments, to um, enhance their own personal lives? Well, we we just have need to realize the power of your love. And through some very simple techniques involving breathing and body awareness, you can start to do it. Just even, even if you don't even know how to do quantum touch, if you're just taking a series of deep breaths and exhaling through your hands and put your hands on somebody with a lot of love, you're going to start seeing some results. Of course, you get a lot stronger if you know more, but just keep the breathing going. Put your love in your hands and exhale through your hands, and you'll automatically start getting some healing results right now without any further instruction. But don't stop the breathing because that's how you keep your energy raised. That's so important. It's amazing the power of the breath. It can take us into deeper realms of consciousness. We can heal our bodies with it, infuse our physical cells with oxygen. It's just really the biggest gift that we have on the planet is our breath. Richard Gordon, thank you so very much for joining us today and for sharing your wealth of wisdom and about quantum touch and the quantum touch pendant and what's to come next. I really appreciate you sharing your time with us. Oh, it's my pleasure, Sylvia. It's real great to be here. Thank you so much. And thank you, everyone, for listening. Enjoy the rest of your day and know that love is always the answer. It's what is infused in everything in and around you. And it really is who you are. Take care. Until next week, we'll talk to you then.